Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the world of the International Fat Talks. Hello, friends. It's always a honor and pleasure to meet different kinds of people from different professional zones. It could be the medical stream, it could be the teaching stream, it could be the psychological space as well, or it could also be, guess what? Yes, you guessed it right. It could be a person who's coming from a very beautiful space, spending 40 years on the professional phase as a trainer, as a coach, as a medical rep, and much, much more. There are so many things and so many aspects connected to one single person. How they have been able to beautifully build a future for themselves, how they have overcome their challenges is all that we connect with on the International Fab Talks. So friends, join us today to welcome our celebrity and guest is joining us all the way from Chennai is Mr. G. Murli Shankar. And that is really nice. We are really happy to have him here. He's the founder of Busy Bee Training and Consultants Private Limited. Let us know more about him as to how he started all of this, who inspired him and how he became successful and has spent 40 years as a professional and still continuing the journey to inspire the younger generation. Join us, friends. Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Thank you, Ms. Andrea, and thank Mr. Srivatan who introduced me to you. Uh, I think the primary lesson that we need to give the younger generation and to the rest of the people here is to be ensure that there's enough gratitude and there's patience. I think these are the two characteristics which are sadly being missing out in the current generation. We need to be more grateful. We need to have a little more tolerance and patience. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My dear friends, sir has a lot of gratitude for all the incidents that have occurred in his life, the people connected to his life. When you fill your life with gratitude, when you're kind enough to acknowledge the presence of others, to give due respect to the people in our lives, you become you know, much more happier in your own space. So that's what is all about our special celebrity. He is Jean Murli Shankar with us. Now, sir, with your permission, I go ahead and share your profile and then we begin the session. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Friends, as you all know, it's our responsibility to share the profiles of our celebrities and guests who are here. And today it is Murli sir with us. Join us, friends, to know more about him. In a brief way, I shall share his profile and we'll get to know more about him from himself directly. Now, friends, as I earlier mentioned, sir has four decades, you can say 40 plus years of experience and he has gained a lot of knowledge by working with different MNCs, various MNCs at various locations and as well as or in various roles or positions around the globe. And to raise the standard, to improve the efficiency in sales and other operations by sharing ideas and learning new skills that he required at that moment or you know what he needed to learn, he had to pick up and he did that very well. He learned it very well and is passing it on to the younger generation. He was very responsible and he spent uh, 40 years in the corporate uh, sector. As I could put that, he was connected with around about uh, 30,000 products. Imagine that 30,000 products connected with seven different countries. He has touched almost 40,000 families and more you could say. He's very much focused on coaching and training, sales training, which is very important. Focusing more on creative thinking, marketing abilities and building brand equity and team building skills as, as well, a channel management uh, you know, expert, and as well as strategizing, et cetera. Training business entrepreneurs, and as well as Sir was focused on uh, training teachers of Carmel School. That's really nice. That's wonderful, Sir, to get to know about it. He was also part of the initiative called as Nan Modalavan Project for Diploma and Graduate Engineering Students in Chennai by the Tamil Nadu government for seven colleges. And friends, Sir is really a wonderful person. As I earlier mentioned, he's connected to his school. He loves his school and he has so many beautiful incidents to share. Uh, his father, his son, and you know, there's much, much more. I'm not going to reveal anything. We're just going to get it out from Sir. We'll keep that all under wraps and, and keep it secret till we get it out from Sir. Uh, now, now, the younger generation, this is all for you. When you see personalities like Samur Lisa, who has spent four decades, and there are so many of you like hopping from one company to another very quickly, uh, or you know, really abandoning your jobs and just sitting down like that, doing nothing, or not okay with the new laws that come within the company. You just want to have your way, which is not possible until you are the owner of your own business. So first you have to go through the 
process of getting yourself trained and experienced and then you could really have a startup like sir has done that so let's get to know more about sir now and his journey and see how he's going to inspire us and what's the wisdom that he's going to share that matters the most dear sir you've been a, a very nice person i've connected with you over the past few days you're very polite and what i found in you one very important thing you are a person without ego and that makes you extra special when you meet people who are egoless you immediately have to bond with them they are going to be really great mentors in your life the moment you find somebody who has ego I, i'm sure they will also make you run in that phase and you also start having that ego within you and ego takes you nowhere it just takes you down the drain so now people would love to know more about you directly from you your friends relatives and you know unknown people who view this video you would like to know how would you explain and define yourself today on the international fab talks as to who is the real murli shankar sir well real murli shankar is an extremely down to earth uh, from a lower middle class background and uh, you touched upon a, a very specific point about ego uh, my father used to tell me my father is my greatest idol ever i miss him a lot he left us in 2000 so since then i've been alone and he's been watching and tell you a small story about uh, a footballer later but he used to say it is a fruit it is a tree which is laden with fruit that will always be bent the the tree that has got no fruit is going to be erect i said one day he said you know there's one thing that is very very stiff now which human being is stiff he says a dead body now that hit me so hard i can never forget it and yeah then i realized that i at I, i was uh, i mean like any other youngster you know where i used to feel upset with things not going what i thought was right principally right i would stand up in the bar and he said no that's not the way you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to ease out of situations not make it more complicated and he says when you're getting into an argument it is basically who is right what you should be doing is debating and finding out what is right and these were things that he is to told me at you know when i was a kid and amongst many other things before i forget he said to donate you need to have a heart and i said no pa you need money to give if i don't have money what am i going to give and it took me years to realize that yes it's not and i don't need to have money i need to have a heart to give it took a long time for me to understand that so he's been the prime uh, idol for me the most uh, revered person in my life i look up to him and at sometimes when i'm in uh, die straits I'd stand out and said, "Go back and see how would Appa have solved this." And I said, "Yeah, maybe that's the way." And then I come back. I said, "Take, take. I don't take the decision when I have doubt. I stay back, pull, pull aside, wait, and then." Uh, so he's had an Im immense, immense way on my life. And as I said, I, I need to be grateful to all the people in my life, God. Uh, you for giving me this opportunity, Mr. Sri Vasan, for having connected, and a host of my my teachers and professors. As I said earlier to you during our talk earlier, the second standard teacher, he was absolutely. I mean, I was a pet, and I was. What was her name, sir? Uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. And uh, he said, uh, I mean, I was good. I was. There, we had another guy called uh, Apurva Patel, so it was. between me and uh, apurva one and two so so number one number two rank one rank two is to be circulating between the two of us so obviously i was her pet and it was then that time when uh, again i felt very seriously ill so what Sorry? was the illness what was the illness like you, uh, <laughs> and you didn't mention your school which school were you what <laughs> I was in Don Bosco. The reason for my laugh is Don Bosco in Chennai or was no, it Don Bosco, Bosco Matunga, Bombay? Bombay, Matunga, Bombay. Okay. Okay. Matunga. The reason I laughed when you asked about my illness is because it it was an extremely rare illness. It it is something uh, which smokers. Okay, 
and I got it in second standard. Neither my dad smoked, and I didn't smoke in second standard for sure. So I believe there's something called dry pleurisy, and then they'd given up on me, and they said, God knows. And that was the time um, Pope visited India. And Bosco's, they took the entire bus, all the children, and they gave a rose in the hand, and we were standing along the entire footpath um, on the way to Santa Cruz Airport to receive Pope. And I couldn't go. I was extremely upset. It took me years to understand that my dad was probably the blessing in disguise because after all the dignitaries, that is the chief minister, etc., 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 the first civilians were my parents and my mother was holding me and I was blessed by the Pope. And I, it still gives me goosebumps. So, it, in hindsight, no, it, yeah, because that time when you're passing through that, um, Humans being humans, oh, why me? Why why me only? You know? What did I do to deserve this? Do I deserve this? It's a normal question that you ask. But then he has a plan. He has a plan. And as I've matured in life, as I've grown, I've realized that, yes, now he did have a plan. And all those things which I wanted, then he's given it to me. Believe me, uh, Miss Andrea, just about everything, everything that I've dreamt of, and in the in the fourth standard, I still remember we had this cry, you know, child relief and youth. So they said that all those people who have a car put their hands up, and every student in the class except Murli Shankar put their hand up because I didn't have a car, and they gave it in the car to put the sticker. The adhesive is put on the front side so that when you sit, uh, stick it up on the glass inside. The people driving behind can see what what is stuff printed is on the the adhesive on the printed side. So as a kid, it was not the kind. I, I don't know. I did not get that sticker, and I was very upset. I went home crying. I said, "Papa, I need to buy tomorrow." I do not know what you're doing. You are buying a car, and Dad was working at the time. He got his office car, and he said, "Okay, for two days you can take this and go." But then after that, I had to go back by the regular bus, and believe it. When I joined Johnson & Johnson, which is known for baby products and all those things, there's a least known division of Johnson, which is called Permacell. You know, guess what? The Permacell made stickers. We, used to be, we couldn't call them a sticker. We used to call them a self adhesive labels at that time. So I had those stickers, and my friends are still using it even now. I've given them labels to put the salt, pepper, etc. on the oak, stainless steel or glass bottles, which is still working fine. 40 years later. So that speaks volumes about the quality of the product. And uh, yes, and uh, the stickers I got, and I got a car uh, much later. I mean, the first car I got was a second-hand car. But yes, he's given me. So just about anything and everything I, I dreamt, yes, I have got. Excellent, excellent. Thank sir. you. Thank God for that. Yes, that's wonderful, sir. Now we'd like to know what role did Professor Padma Namath have in your life? Oh. And uh, how was that journey with him and what did you learn from this great personality? Uh, Professor Padmanabhan, uh, you ask any person from uh, Bombay uh, SIES College and I, I don't think, uh, irrespective of the faculty they are from, whether they're from arts or commerce, they would still know Professor Padmanabhan. And uh, he was just amazing. He, would, he was te teaching me organic chemistry and those charts, you know, with the hexagon and all that, the formula, structural, empirical formula, he would write it like with ease, never refer a book. He would just carry four chalks and come and go on con continuously writing. To such an extent that there was one boy in my class called Deepak, I remember, we used to call him Deepak. And his brother was one year senior to us. Okay. So this guy said, sir, I have your, your last year's note. And we used to just sit and refer that where does, when is Professor Patnavan going to make a difference in one word? He didn't. And one fine day he was teaching up one particular chapter. Then he turned, he says, uh, Deepak, you may want to take this down because this is not there in your brother's notes. The whole class burst out laughing for about 10 minutes. We were he, he was that sort of a person. Amazing. I mean, blessed with memory so sharp and so good, he could remember locker numbers, roll numbers, age in bottle numbers by heart. 
So if he was around when we were doing the practical, we felt very happy because sometimes you get some reagents which you're not used in your uh, practicals earlier. And you'll come say, yes, what is it? And side shell bottle number 23. And that's the way he was. So he was an amazing, amazing personality. And because of his personality, I'm sure people would start loving the subject. Organic chemistry, it's not the easiest of subject to you know uh, understand or like. But he made organic chemistry fun. That was so. After my second uh, Jacqueline uh, Miss Professor Palmanabhan was responsible for. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing all of that uh, with regard to Professor Padmanabhan, uh, organic chemistry, and all of that. You say even he had a very sharp memory to remember the names of students, their roll numbers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, sir, we'd like to know who is the Hitler in your life. <laughs> uh, Hitler is a man I love most. He's my idol and uh, extremely strict. And despite being normally, what would happen is you have your the boys getting more attached to the mother. My my son is more attached to Vaidegi. Okay, so he goes and anything that he wants, he goes and whispers it to a ear. But with me, uh, I was a lot more comfortable with my dad, and he was like. We would play and all that he had to do was come and say, he would even call me by name. He would say, die. That's it. Hey. Right. That's uh, it. Hey. Not only me, entire team would pack and go home. So that was a kind of, uh, you know, image that he had lived up. But despite being strict, uh, he was very, very, I keep wondering, you know, how we managed all of that. We never missed a Saturday or a Sunday going to the park. Okay? And uh, he was drawing a great salary. And me and my three sisters were all convent educated in the best schools in Bombay. Okay? So I was from Bosco and my, all my three sisters were from Auxilium. And they, even today, they, these schools are considered to be, you know, upmarket and fairly expensive he got all of us admitted there. And religiously, we, we would go out on a Saturday, spend time, go to the garden, play around. And, and we have done all of that. I, and something which I found tough to replicate, we just won that. And I was constantly on tour and uh, I'd tell, okay, then this, uh, you know, this weekend, Abhi will be, be there and this weekend I would be in uh, Bahrain or Qatar or Saudi or all, God knows what. So it just kept on. And you know, that one Saturday when we promised each other the one weekend that we said we'd spend time would probably happen once in three months, as against once uh, every week. So amazing personality. Amazing personality. And uh, he would, when it came to principles, he was extremely good, extremely strong, very strict. And on the other side, when it came, he'd always say, when it's food and fun, he said, you can cross the bar. When it comes to discipline, sorry, when I draw the line, the line stays. And if you cross it, it's Great. Food and fun was okay, but not discipline. You cannot break the rules with regard to Never. discipline. Never. So, can you do us a favor? Can you just, again, repeat that word? How did he call out to you all? Or how did he address <laughs> that? Just one. You, you, I, we were in the third floor. I was taking the third floor. Would simply come out and say, die. End of story. Not only for me, for the entire team, we would all pack the packs, so you pick up a stump, a bad ball, and go back home. The whole team would be dissolved in just the one time. That's really, really nice. Now, sir, you must even share this. Why were you close to your dad? What was it that you saw with, within him that you felt that he's more closer to you and you're not a mom's uh, you know, pet, you're a dad's pet? Uh, I, I don't know. I got, you know, I probably got tired away, you know, by the things that he taught me, as I said, they would do this, do that. And uh, I would think, I would argue with him at times. You, know, you need money to give. And he said, no, 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 you need a heart to give. And I would wonder, I would argue with him. So we got into this very healthy discussion, you know, with him, and he, and he entertained that. He never said no. And then uh, one of his favorite uh, tagline was, if you don't understand my silence, you never understand my words. I, mean, I remember the poster very clearly. We had a waterfall and uh, in beneath, beneath that was a sentence. So when he wanted to say no, he would just point to that 
poster and keep quiet. That's it. So we have understood that it means it's a no. So small things like that, no? And he did, he had a knack of doing things differently. And uh, when I when I graduated, he told me only one thing. He says, "Bully, uh, don't ever compete with others trying to take the credit for others' work because there's too much competition. Work hard." And he said, there's very little competition in the category of people working hard. So that's the only thing. But you can choose your life, your career, the way you want. I am, I am, I've given what I've wanted. I give you the best of education. Now it's up to you to do. I will not interfere. But the only advice from my side, work hard. Yes, yes. Now, when dad called you, called out, right? Yep. That when he called out sternly and wanted you back. Where were you playing with your friends out? You're playing, playing down in the field. What type of game was it? Cricket. cricket. Or oh, cricket. Yeah. I mean, two of my favorite games was one, of course, was cricket, and uh, during the monsoon, it used to be table tennis. What about football? What do you have to share about football? Sorry. Football actually, uh, it's not my favorite game, though. No? But there was one story which caught me and uh, which I used as obituary for my dad. Okay. Now, this the story goes that there was this uh, footballer, just an average footballer, and there used to be a man who used to go walk along with him. And this guy would keep asking the coach, hey, give me a chance, please give me. And he was just an average guy. So, coach said, okay, next time I'll see him. You wait, you play, you sit on the bench. And this went on for some time. One fine day, one of the star players of the team was absent. He couldn't make it. So the coach said, come on, you know, you called up the and he said, you come down. The opportunity that you've been asking for has now arrived. And I'm giving you this opportunity. Please come. So this boy hesitated. And the coach was absolutely visibly upset. He says, you've been pestering me for an opportunity for so long. And here's the opportunity. And... There seem to be doubt. I mean, you're not answering with a firm yes. What's wrong? Says, you don't want to come, so I will not give you an opportunity ever in, my, in your life thereafter. So, boy says, sir, okay, give me a couple of minutes, sir. I will be there. I'll be on the job. Then he goes on to the job. And believe me, that day this boy played exceedingly well. And he won the match for the team. Everybody said, oh my God, I and mean, whatever happened to you today? And uh, the, the coach asked him, and what happened to that old man who used to come with you? So he said, uh, Coach, the old man that you are referring to was is my father. And he was blind. So we would discuss the game with, with him every day. And he would tell me, oh, this is what you should, you should have done. This is the way you should tackle. This is the way you should. And he says, what happened to you with him today? He says, uh, every day he would come and I had to explain the game to him because he was blind. Today was the first day that he saw me because when you called, he had just passed me. And I was att attending the funeral. Today, he is able to see me from the top. And that's why he says, I played so brilliant. Again, was bumps. So, it's a story which uh, I don't know, some one of my friends told me. And it's, there's some things in life, you know, which they just stick on to you once a year. So, this is one of that. I wrote this as my obituary to my dad when I lost him in 2000, September, 5th September, 2001. And well, I, I keep missing him. Whenever I miss him, I go back to the story. And one of my other uh, mentors in life is Mr. Zoe Bhaidri. So, I talked to him and I said, Sir, I'm down. And then he says, Remember the footballer? So, he keeps telling me, repeating me that, and ensuring that I bounce back to him. I mean, though I, as I said, I'm not football is not my cup of tea, but as a, as as a, because of this particular story, is I do take some interest in. It. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing. That's really very nice. Now we're going to go more deeper and ask you when and how did you meet Vaidehi, and who is Vaidehi? <laughs> okay. Uh, are you a scuba diver? Are you a scuba diver? Yes, sir. You're deep diving into questions now. <laughs> <laughs> well, by these, uh, we have a love marriage. Ours is a love marriage. And 
I was in Johnson and Johnson that time, and uh, he was uh, he was one among four sisters, and she had lost her father at an early age. And uh, see, J and J May, it was a uh, Johnson and Johnson. It was a very uh, healthy crowd. Okay. So everybody would say, "Hey, Murli, hey, drop me at the station, na." From so I would drop somebody at the at the station and go back. So these guys have seen me with different. I'm dropping a different girl on the scooter every day. In fact, I would drop them from the office to the station. That's about it. Okay, because they would have these other that you missed by one minute. You have to wait for the next ten minutes to get that train. So that was the whole. And we colleagues. So it was good, and it was very very uh, open culture. So this guy said, "Oh, Murli, you on the daily you're going around with a different girl." I am not going to give you introduction to that with her because she has lost her father when she was uh, four or five, and that they don't have a male member of the family. They're all four sisters, and they're very poor. And uh, I don't want your, you know, this happy-go-lucky attitude towards her. Uh, I only give and introduce you to her only if she is very, very serious. I said, "What do I do to convince you?" And after about three or four months. Finally, Venkat's wife, Anu, we just call her Anu. So she introduced me. She told Venkat, "I think this guy is serious, better introduce." So that's how I got married. Uh, that's how I got introduced. And uh, from office, when I used to come, my mother used to say, "Go, go and get some vegetables." So I used to go to Matunga, which is the place where we get vegetables in Bombay, and a lot of South Indian stuff you get there, Tamil stuff. So she would tell me the wine to, other wine to. So I would go there on the way back from office, pick this up. Spend some time there at a coffee shop and then reach. Home. So that was the routine, and that's where I saw the market. And I said, "Okay, try." And then uh, when I proposed, it was uh, I mean, all my life I was in Bosco, which is a male uh, school, only, only boy school. We never had this sort of interaction. I said, "Look, uh, I don't know how to propose. Uh, I one thing I can tell you is I'm not promising you a bed of roses." I've got three sisters, and as you know, the sister at least one sister has to get married, and only then we can discuss about our marriage. Now, if you come and say that you know I want to get married tomorrow or day after, and I'm having pressure, then let's call it right now. And she said, "Is this the way you propose?" I said, "Look, I told you I don't know to propose this, so that's the first thing I told her." Then she said, "Well, they will keep it." I said, "Take your time. I'm in no hurry, but this this involves our lives and our family." Take your time, and then, and I'm okay. So if you say no, I'm still okay. It took a time, a little longer than I expected. So I, I thought it was a no. I just ignored her. Then one fine day she came and came and said, "So why are you not talking to her?" Venkat's wife, Anu. I said, "No, I told her to you know ask her in a week, and then she took more than a week. So I assumed that uh, she's not interested. So she's not interested, then I don't want to follow up in a pester." Thing you stupid. That's not the way it is. You are supposed to see the girl. Have you asked her? Asked her again? At least have you asked her that what is the decision? I said no because I told her that she is supposed to come back. Then she said she said no. You go and ask. She says no. Then you tell me. Then I'll see what I can. And I went and asked her. She said yeah, but I thought you would come and ask me. So I said okay. Then I went and told her no. I said you are right. And yes, I asked her, and she said yes. That's it. That's how I met. Uh, At what age did you meet her? What like were you a teenager or in your early twenties? No, I was working by then. I was yeah, I was in uh, early twenties. I was working for Johnson and Johnson. Before Vaidhi entering your life, did you happen to see any other girl, or was it Vaidhi he be the first person who attracted your attention, or I mean, gained your love and respect? Yeah, I mean, as a serious uh, affair, she's the first lady. Okay, passing by, you like this one, that one, the crushes. Okay, maybe Mary. But as I said, now that's because primarily we were in um, in an all boy school. So any girl, you know, you tend to, you know, I would row. But that's about it. Now we never had the guts to venture out and ask, you know, for the fear of retribution. But yes, it was the first love, and thankfully, yesterday was our thirty seventh anniversary. We celebrated with that. Uh, Ramakrishna mission with those orphans there, so that was great. So thirty-seven years of marriage and about four years before that. Wow, that's wonderful. Thirty-seven plus four—it's almost four decades together. 
Yes, yes. that's wonderful. That's really, really nice. Now, sir, I'm like, see, you have three sisters. Yes. And how did they respond to you? Because you would have been the apple of their eyes. I think you're the only brother. Yes. Yes. So how did your sisters respond? Were they very possessive of you or they were very compassionate and gave you the freedom to be with the person? No, because, you? yeah, I was the eldest. Huh? So they were not in the position where they could, you know, support me or, you know, uh, covertly or even otherwise. So they had they had to go by what uh, Appa and Amma said, the no, parents. So that was dictum for all of us, in fact. So they couldn't support me. But then uh, Chitra, was Chitra, the eldest one, she is married to a dentist in Bombay. And after that wedding, uh, I I been invited very to the wedding, Chitra's wedding, and then that's where all of us came, met her, and then they were okay. They didn't, um, they weren't uh, against it for sure, but they didn't, they didn't openly support either for fear for whatever. Because I told you, you know, that way at home we are very, very orthodox and very strict. Yes, yes. Now, as siblings, did you all fight? I mean, before you all become like adults, uh, as youngsters, did you all fight over anything? Did you all fight for the attention of your parents or like if it could be like with some eatable or something like that? The TV remote, you could also say. You you, you really are an expert, uh, Scuba Dive. So it was actually, uh, generally people say, no, Ladakh. It's fun to be a boy. The boy is given is pampered. Culturally, the, the people want boys in the, especially because in Hindus you say that you have to light the fire and uh, boy is important, etc. They carry on the family surname. In my house, it was the other. I had to do all the work. The girls were pampered. It was one standard punchline of the head. I'm going to Inger. Today they are here. They are somebody else's property. Tomorrow they'll go there. So as long as they are here, let them enjoy that. Because we do not know who's uh, what's in store for them tomorrow. Okay. So they got all the benefits. Whatever color they wanted, that was on the wall. Whatever TV they wanted, it was on the wall. And when I said something, oh, we'll say, but you, are, you, you can do it later. Let them have it here the way they want it. And when you build your house, you get married, you can then decide. So that is the way it was. So I had, actually had to fight uh, for... Uh, even normal things at home, you know. So that that sort of a challenges at home did, did exist. But yeah, that's what I think probably made us better as well because the relationship built on that. Today, uh, Abhishek is a lone child. So I said, I don't want him to put those things which I underwent. And uh, he's now, you know, he, he's only comfortable with his circle and his mother. And occasionally he talked to me. So probably that he's not used to you know, living with that family, having work, what this is, so being together, sharing. Those things are not done. Because he got everything, whatever he wanted. There's nothing to share. So the habit of sharing, it had to be, you know, we had actually inculcated the teaching. It didn't come on naturally. Yes. Now, among all your three sisters, who was your favorite? Who was very close to you? Obviously, uh, Chitra was the eldest because yeah. we had more, we spent more time. Okay, and second was uh, Jaya. Jaya was uh, now she's in Manchester, and Gauri is there in uh, Miami, Florida. So Jaya was very very soft, so tripe pot. You know, I mean anything and anything should just. And she had her taps open, this little loud voice, and then she would open a tap, and you can see the Ganga Jamna. <laughs> down yes, I so, get that. so we had to be yeah, quite, quite, quite. But in terms of relationship, yes. I mean, all three were equal, but Chitna, to some extent, because we had we spent more time together because she was the second. And uh, Jaya, definitely because she was the one person who was extremely soft and, you know, very vulnerable in terms of anything. And if you say, you never know which word or which tone hurt her. So we had to be extra careful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's really nice. Thank you so much for taking me on the beautiful journey with regard to your childhood and your time, you know, with your dad and with Vaidehi, ma'am, etc. That's really nice. Wonderful. So now we talk about traveling and we come back again to your personal life. Now we go on the professional side. You've been traveling to seven countries. You've been, you know, 
dealing with 30,000 products. That's not the joke. Like one or two products and we are tired of it maybe. Even to sell one product or conduct with one product and, you know, go in for sales and marketing and stuff. You've been dealing with 30,000 products. And I find this quite surprising, magical at the same time. But I'd like to know how you did all of this. Um, Gavis has an, uh, I was working for Gavis, which is an Italian company. And by God's grace, I work with the Americans, which is Johnson & Johnson and Xerox. I work with the British, which is NK Electric. And Gavis is an Italian company. I have also worked for Clipson, which is an Australian company. Now, though we brand all of them as a one brush saying that they're all MNCs, culturally they're different. So the Italian culture is different from the American culture, from the British culture. Okay, Americans are simple. I mean, higher and higher. I mean, you could be an oak which has given them the shade and the but the minute you stop giving them the shade, they will not think twice to action. The British are a little more humane. Italians are very much like Indian. And most of the industries in Italy, if you look at it, is still family. -owned. So that family culture is a lot in Italian. So when we uh, I, uh, when I went there and joined them, I realized that the entire globe was managed by you'd be surprised. Only five sales people. And I was one of them. I was handling India and the Middle East. And likewise, there were group uh, regional managers. They're called the regional rural manager, handling different zones. So one person who was able to talk uh, Latin American languages, US and all that. One person talking Australian and that. So they divided the entire group, just about five zones. And I was managing, managing Middle East and uh, India. So entire South, right from Saudi Arabia to India, seven countries. And managing Middle East was not very difficult because uh, it is generally managed by uh, Indians in most cases. So the way they promoted the product is they said it's impossible for five people to manage the manage the entire group. They also did that. So they said that you have to train your channel partners. Your job is to and the way they appointed channel partners was very extremely well structured. So they say you take the flight, go down to a particular like Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, pick up the yellow pages. We don't want you to go and hit the market on the first day. Just sit down the first day in the hotel, open up the yellow pages, list down all the electrical traders with the biggest ads in the yellow. Make a note of that, find what they're doing, put it on, document them in an Excel, on an Excel sheet, just take that. Then you send them a message to them or call them up and say, I'm here to meet you. Then go and check how big the warehouses are, how many sold, uh, showroom salesmen they had, how many project or auto salesmen they had, which of the brands they are operating, do they have any competitive brands, have they signed up with people that they, they will not have competitive brands, get that entire information. So by the time you walk out of that distributor's office, I mean, you would have this full kundali on, on one sheet of paper. So the, even if I had left the company and gone, the next person who comes is not starting afresh. He has the entire X-ray in front of him regarding that. And then we would discuss and say, okay, okay, this is good. This, what is your opinion? Then the person there would say, no, from my director would say, hey, why didn't you try this? And I said, I've been there, but then this guy's got competitive stuff and I'm not very comfortable. He says, okay, fine. Because you're the guy who, tomorrow you should achieve the target. Okay, so I'm only asking you a question. I'm not suggesting that you should. My job is to ask questions. So when I say, why don't you tie up with that gun? It is not, I'm recommending it. I'm only asking you why or why not. So if you're able to answer and you are convinced that this is done, no questions asked. So that's the way they, so when you train those people, the salesmen for all the product, you can't train them. Unless you're an expert. So you have to go through the bit by bit. You have no idea which salesman from which distributor is going to ask what question. And that that's the time I realized that you, know, you need to learn the and I I'll share a small distinct video with you uh, on, on your mobile later. So there's something called as the Kaizen principle. That's the time I learned it. I said you know, there's a simple game I conducted with one of the colleges, and uh, you have all the four aces there. Okay, and then you ask them. To, I shuffle them up and I say no more. Break it up into 50% and all that. Well, I know where I've kept the aces, which is right on top. I shuffle the cards, I move it on, I remove the card, all the four segments, all the top cards are aces. 
So I said, this is the principle, a place for everything and everything in its place. So when I'm going there to Saudi and I'm, I know I'm going to be talking to them for say four hours. So maximum time I have four hours with them. So in those four hours, what, what products can I choose? I read that product and absolutely explain it. And I tell them, fine, if there's anything, today we're going to be discussing, there were four groups of products, boxes, switches, lighting, and industrial plug. So I said, we'll be discussing lighting. So I would go on the lighting and take the important products that I have and go absolutely L4 leather. I mean, I wouldn't leave a comma in there. And by the time I taught each one of them the different product, automatically I learned more and more about it. And if I sat down and say, I have to learn 30,000 products, I don't think I would have ever done. So one tour, I would go, I would finish a set of products. By the time I'm going for the second tour, I would finish the second set of products. And in a matter of time, I finished the entire. In almost about just about six to eight months, the entire, all the four catalogs were my own. Excellent, sir. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. Now, we'd like to know about your first boss, Mr. Ramadan. I'm sorry? We'd like to know about your first boss. Yeah. Um, I, I joined up immediately after. I, I didn't want to be in sales, to be honest. Okay. I was, I, I have done, as I thought, I was impressed a lot by Professor Patna. So I was looking at a, a chemistry R&D job, you know, sitting in the laboratory, trying to find out what chemical, whether, how can I help uh, create a vaccine or create a medicine, something like that. And uh, it was almost six months. I, I didn't get a job. Then I realized that, you know, I'm just sitting at home, not doing a thing, and uh, I didn't say anything. But yes, I mean, the environment and the vibes weren't very positive. I said, no, I need to. So then I asked my dad, I told my dad, Papa, I'm trying my level best to get into any one of these, you know, research, development, pharmacy. I'm not getting it. So there are a couple of jobs in the sales field. So should I apply? He said, look, I told you in the beginning, I'm not going to say choose this or choose that. It's your call and you take I said, okay, I'm, I'm I'm not comfortable with sales, but let me choose. So I went, and, and that was the time that uh, I met Mr. Those vacancy in a company called Unisupra. That was Mr. Ramanao. And he was a person who, who had launched DBITD by US Vitamin in India. And then he joined Lupin. He was GM for Lupin. And then he started Unisupra. When I joined him, I think he trained us for almost three weeks at YMCA Bombay for a new company, for a startup company to put 40 medical preps at YMCA for about two months. I think that was one hell of a cost. One hell of a cost. And that was the kind, because he was used to multinational marketing. The style, style of our company was, he was uh, in US Vitamin and then he joined Lupin, which is a very rich company. So he could, his trend and his lifestyle was based on so there was pain. So he could, he did the same thing when it was his company as well. It's got to be fair to him in that aspect. But he didn't have the cash resources to carry forward. So we had a problem of uh, cash flow six months down the line. So very soon then we had to look out. And when I looked out, I actually had I joined an offer. I joined a company called Jensen and Nicholson. They were into paints for a month. Then I was up, I was uh, applying left right center. And I also had a call from Johnson and Johnson. And I joined Jensen and Nicholson, and in about three weeks, I got the offer from Johnson and Johnson. And obviously, JNJ. So that time, it JNJ was a company which was very well advertised. Uh, and if, if you're from Bombay, or if you ask people from Bombay, they'll tell you that they have one of the best lawns in Bombay. So green lawns that surround the entire factory. So they were known by the lawn. So that itself was a good uh, brand building image for them. So I said, I chose JNG. Then I moved from Unisupra, Jensen Nicholson for about three weeks exactly. And JNG. and JNG had again an excellent human being called Uday Kritikar. Uh, I, as a line boss, was my first boss. And uh, I don't think making those models anymore because 
when we were J and J was actually you know if you ask people outside they would say it's not Johnson and Johnson this tension and tension and believe me the way the regional manager would, would uh, treat you because you're supposed to visit the office only once in a week which is your meeting day all other days you're supposed to be on the field Monday afternoon was my meeting day oh, say good afternoon sir for five years into 52 Mondays. The answer was the same. What's good about it? Afternoon. How many orders have you got? What's good about the afternoon? How many orders have you got? I mean, this was almost like your what current day we say AI, no? He never made a mistake. He to answer exactly. Very fun-loving guy otherwise. But Monday afternoon, we used to be like, that, like, oh God, I have to beat this guy. I better carry one order at least. That's all the way. I mean, we are hung. So that was the kind of error he built. It. So uh, he was a Parsi, Ronnie Baba. But one day afternoon, you would see a different Ronnie. And though at, at the conference and all that, he was like any other party, full of fun and life. But that's the way we grew up. So we go back every week. Better carry an order, at least one order. Oh. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir, for sharing. And Uday Kirtikar would work over time, over through the evening and late evening. If I have not met my target, he would also work and say, Muni, take this order and put it on the order. How sweet, how sweet. So kind. Very kind. That's what I said. God, stop making those models. It's rare to find such people, right? Let's Absolutely. see. Very, very lucky. Grateful to God yet again. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you, sir, for sharing all those beautiful experiences. Now, we'd like to know more about Zohe Bahaidu. What role did he play in your life until date? He is your guru. How did you come in contact with this great personality? And what did what are the benefits that you derived from the interaction with this particular personality? Uh, Zohe Bahaidu actually is a Tanzanian. And he was the CEO of a company called MK. Okay. And uh, my immediate boss in Johnson & Johnson left it, Johnson & Johnson and joined this company called MK, which is the British Martina. He said, Murli, you're true. I know you very well. So I, I mean, he, was my, I was a, he was my line boss. So he knew me how my ability is. What I, he said, you're in. He said, the CEO would just like to meet you. And uh, it's only a formality. And then after that, we issued the Appointment offer. Then okay. Your boss stood for you. I said why? Then he removed a draw and he showed my resume. That he had written, rejected first time. And the second time when I, th I think after Persho spoke to him and he said, Yes, I think it's good. He said, take him at your risk. Showed me that part. Take him at yours. So we were thank the time. We extremely candid, extremely honest. And there were times when, you know, I said, uh, Mr. Hydri, because now I call him Zoe, but we have come close. Those days I used to call him Mr. Hydri. Mr. Hydri, I think, I think it's, a, it's an error. It's a mistake. He would publicly stand up. He's done this to me in front of the entire sales team. The sales team is shocked. This guy is CEO of Middle East. That is the entire Middle East, India and Singapore come under this one man. And he's standing up and he's saying, doing this to Uri. And we had extremely healthy arguments, debates, and come across. And if he made a mistake, he would say sorry. That was the greatest of the man. And time and again, uh, he would come up with some absolute brilliant idea. So when he was sitting at Kafparit, which was his favorite uh, president Kafparit, Raj, one day when I went, he, the waiter started talking to him and how the family is that. I said, well, I mean, how come that uh, these guys do you? Do you know him before? He said, no, he's just think. So you think, well, why does he, does he want to be tipping? He says, do you think, uh, who all, you know, who are the list of customers who come to Taj and uh, Gaff for it? Uh, in case you don't know, Ambani is one of them. And then you say, do you think that I am richer than Ambani? No way. So I can't take more than number. So why does he remember me? 
He says, I never address them. Excuse me, waiter, never. I read the placard. I call them, address him by name all the time. Not only him, everybody. So he knows this is one guy who calls, who respects me, who addresses me by my name. So once I do that, they come closer. And once they come closer, they and if you take an architect and go there for a, you know, uh, uh, a dinner, and if this guy behaves this way with you, the architect is going to think that, oh, Gopi is going to have you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner at such. That's the image that you will get. He doesn't know that the waiter is treating you well because you have been treating the waiter well. You don't have to tip. Because if you tip 100, there's somebody who can tip 200. If you tip 200, there's somebody who can tip 500. It's that is a never ending game. So the only way you can win this war is by not is by doing something different. And that difference is respecting him for the person that he is. That is the time I said, yes, this man knows a lot. And, and since then we've been, you know, sharing a lot of things. Yes. Thank you, sir, for sharing. Thank you. Now you've been across seven countries apart from India. Like it could you know, I will, I will not mention the countries now, a little later. As you mentioned, like breakfast in one country, lunch in another country, dinner in a third country. Now, were you the one having the lunch, breakfast and dinner and all of that in different countries or was it somebody else? Was it Mr. Murli? Yes, ma'am. And how did yeah, you I was, I was based out of Jebel Ali, Dubai. Jebel had an office in Dubai, which is a free trade. So Dubai to Bahrain is about a 40 minutes flight. Maryland is a different country. So I would have my breakfast at Dubai Airport, lunch at Bahrain, and then I would move down to either Kuwait or Saudi, which is again a different country. So, yes, I mean, the flight was just about an hour or an hour and a half. Jetta is the furthest in the entire Middle East. So that would take about two hours. But otherwise, the flight would be an hour, 40 minutes. And in 40 minutes, you're crossing to an English country. But Though the flight was short, the country was different. The cultures were different. Dubai was very open. Very early. This was an incident. Which I can't forget. And uh, I was I wanted to come back home for Diwali. And I was coming back from Jeddah. I had the flight at the previous week when I went. I got a straight flight, a flight from Dubai to Riyadh. And then from Riyadh to Daman, Daman to Jeddah. Finished up all my work in Saudi and I was coming back. And when I came back, the return flight, because of Diwali, I did not get a direct flight. So I was a hop over flight. Get uh, to Kuwait, Kuwait to so and so, Oman, and then Qatar, and then to Dubai. And almost three hop over, three different flights I could choose. And uh, Gavis was uh, an MNC, so I was allowed business class. So I was traveling business class. So I came to Qatar. And I was the only person at the uh, first class launch. So the Brit was just there. And she saw me and she said, Sir, would you like to change? Because then they, they keep going the uh, uh, SOP the channels, there are Arabic channels. So she said, Would you like to change? Mm -hmm. She said, You have any uh, preference for any particular channel? I said, Chef, is BBC okay? I'm mean, re realizing that she's a Brit. I said, Okay, no problem. BBC is okay, understanding that. So she switched on BBC and they were showing this candles made by Dimple Kapad. Because it was Diwali season. So all that was being telecast on BBC. I was watching that and then I had a drink and uh, I said, okay, let me go. She said, no, sir, uh, it's okay. I could see the flight from where I was sitting. And I got ready. She said, no, sir, I mean, you can enjoy your drink. We finished. Then she said, uh, so once you're done, let me know. So I carried the bag. She said, no, sir, be lovely. I said, no, it's, it's, I mean, I'm used to that. She said, no, please. She took the bag and she opened the BMW, put my luggage behind in the boot. She went in the front, opened the door, allowed me to sit, and she drove the car with barely 100 meters. But here there's a white female driving the car. I'm sitting on the backside with my, I came and told her, you know, guess what? I mean, we have really got independent. Now, another white driver who was driving me, she took good care of me. She changed the channel in the first place. She gave me the food that I wanted. She asked me, what food you'd like to have? She gave me the right food. 
and she dropped me in the car. I came in a BMW 100 meters from the launch to the aircraft, but she drove the car in the front and she opened the door. She said, I mean, I, was, I really felt elated. Yes, I said, we have come a long way since 1947. So, the <laughs> a small incident, but yes, uh, it's, it's unforgettable. Yes, so thank you, sir, for sharing that. Thank you very much. As you've said, we've come a long way since 1947. I get that point very well. Now the world is really a big global village where we really give importance to unity, love, respect, dignity, and spread happiness above all its peace. We need to. Yes. Now, sir, I'd like you to come back into another space. Who is this Bruce? And what role has Bruce played <laughs> in your life? Uh, Bruce is the latest family member and he's been a lucky one at that. A lot of things have changed positively for us after Bruce joining the family. Bruce is a thoroughbred lover man. I was afraid of dogs. And a friend of mine said, See, my dog is littered, would you like to come and choose? And his dog, he had an earlier dollar man. And like any other dollar man, he was he got took an attachment to my friend's brother's daughter, who school it, school going kid. But she was his master. So if she left her book, her shoes, her scale, her ruler, her pencil box, no one could touch it. If anybody goes and touches it, this guy's growling. If she can touch her accessories, nobody else. And one day, I think uh, he scored less marks. And uh, her father scolded her. So this guy sitting in the corner and started crawling. And she back answered. So the minute she back answered, he went to slap her. Just raised his arm. 17 stitches. Oh, God. One, seven. I said, Amor, <laughs> no way. I'm getting a government. He said, no, no, you come and see this guy. This guy is not like the other fellow. He has a very docile guy. So I went and met him. This guy is very friendly. And, and I'm talking about Bruce's father. And I said, yeah. He said, you come and take. So Bruce was just about 8 kilos. I asked Abhishek, my son. I said, what do you want a pup? He says, yeah, which one? I said, oh, he said, oh, lovely. By the time I left office, mother and son have gone to my friend's house. They have picked up the dog. Abhishek carried him in his arm, one arm like that. He was just about seven kilos. And if they, when I come back home from office, this guy's already at. And he, I said, How did you choose? He said, Oh, there's a brown one, there's one with blue eyes. We were looking at the, the tail, the shape, and all that. But this guy caught onto Abhishek's jeans. And he for, started following him wherever Abhishek went. So they were looking at this, they were looking at that. And this guy is holding onto Abhishek's jeans. Abhishek said, To hell with the others. This guy is following me and he's taken. So we picked him. That's how Bruce entered the family. And uh, again, grateful to God, it's probably one of the best things that has happened. There was absolutely, I never ever thought in the wildest dream that I would be close to a doberman and sleeping with him on my bed. Because in Bombay, we were living in an apartment. So it was, he would be on the living room. And you would come and scratch the door at about 4.35. This house is a deep close to it. It's a villa. It's a two-story. That poor fellow got lost and he started whining. You know, he started coming and started scratching. So he said, okay, for a day, let him. Maybe he's scared. So we allowed him. He ran in, jumped on the bed. That's it. That becomes a rule. So now he's been kind enough to allow Vaidhi and me sleep on his bed. That's the story. Yes, yes. Thank and you so much for sharing. You see him. This. I mean, I'm yet to see a person who, even people who are, you know, uh, who have a phobia, they all love him. And we had a very, very good trainer at Bombay. We trained him very, very well. He's, he's actually an apology to a dog man. He's probably one of the most friendly dog man. Of course, he looks That's at funny. him. That's it. Yes, and I could visualize you and uh, Bruce spending time together and he's sharing the bed with you. 
and you know you become very close pals that's really wonderful i mean it's amazing he i shouldn't cough and in a way he actually saved vaidhi's life one day uh, vaidhi's sugar went very high in bombay and uh, she normally says no i mean i'm sleeping for 10 minutes you wake me up after 10 minutes but she would sleep in the living room that day she said i am going to the bedroom it's very unlikely that no, she wakes up and uh, again goes to sleep into the bed i said maybe no, she's tired but at this guy he had just come in at that time he was still a uh, young pup he suddenly started down you know running up and down into the bedroom i i i mean i said that this guy is not be behaving normal and when i went into the bedroom and there was a time while he was actually you know going down up and she fell down unconscious three days she was not in her senses but as i went she was falling down she was losing her senses and fortunately that day for her uh abhishek was at home and i was at home immediately we rushed to the hospital three days he was there and out of her senses you're unconscious and uh, i mean i did not know what to do because when she was when she regained consciousness the doctor was asking and pointing you know who do you know who this is what is your name like you ask a small kid who's lost in the uh, you know in a fun, one of those fun fairs so who is this what's his name do you know him and then she just looked blank so it took her another day or two for her to answer those questions that was actually traumatic yes yes thanks for sharing that experience as well thank you i could understand that yes now so i'd like you to give a social message to all age groups all the people i mean the teenagers the youth the middle aged and senior citizens from your experience on the professional side and the personal experiences in your own life what is the message you'd love to give out to the world with regard to this life which is a gift for all of us what is the message that you'd love to share uh one of the first message i got from jonathan and john uh is i mean you're just fresh from college uh, impressionable minds and they said this one thing which is still I mean, very fresh in my ear they said if you have a rupee and i have a rupee and we exchange the rupee we both still have only one rupee whereas if you have an idea and i have an idea and we exchange the idea we both have Two ideas each. Now this had a phenomenal effect on me, and I keep sharing this with all my students at uh, Nan Mudal one. I said, "Do you all feel at some time in your life that you feel? Are you like, you understand Tamil, Miss Anjali? You understand Tamil? Yes, yes, I understand. Yes. I said you must be having a feeling. Are you like, can't see much to it? Then, Nana, I am not doing it. I am not answering it. Uh, especially, you know, uh, so, I mean, whoever you want to score a point, I mean, you have that feeling, and you can see the approval in, you know, all the students. You know, there's a gleam in their eye. They said, "Yes." I said, "Okay, now let me tell you a story." He says, "You have a rupee, I have a rupee. Let's exchange. What I, what happens in the transaction? Do you benefit?" No. I said, "After the session, I said, after our classes, let's go and have chai." So I had the chai. We, you say, sir. I mean, I, you impressed me a lot, and I want to do my own business. and you share an idea with me and i also tell yes okay now i have an idea which is very similar and i share my idea now what happened over the tea you when you walked in you walked in with one idea when you walked out you were walking with how many ideas how many ideas i have got two when we transacted and exchanged money nobody benefited now when we exchange ideas both of us are benefit now tell me which is more important money Not idea. Uh, most of them immediately. There's still some some skeptical. Then I take it one step forward. I said ten years ago, did you in your wildest dream think that you could sit in the comfort of your home or wherever you are and hail for an auto or a taxi, especially in Chennai? Today is it possible? Yes. Today you can go through the app and book a ta taxi or an auto. From wherever you are, and he comes and says, "Password, sir, what is your OTP?" So the things have changed, and I was doing the business. 
he doesn't own the ola because initially when you're doing about 10 years like you want to start a transport company you buy a second hand car go to car then buy a new car keep the new car upon the driver as a driver to drive the second hand car and then the one became two and the two became three that's how you are going today ola and uber don't own a single vehicle and they are the largest transporters on earth so the way of conducting business has changed so it's the idea which is important not the money so if you have an idea whose time has come you're a billionaire yes yes thank you sir thank you very much for sharing thank you so much so ideas matter the most yes and when there's an exchange of ideas we're all enriched now sir i find you to be always uh, you know glowing <laughs> I, I i don't know there's a happy smile on your face there's that brightness you have that positive energy you have a happy demeanor so how is this possible what is the secret to that sparkle in your eyes or the this you know i i should say you have a beautiful expression when you connect with people it's right from the start till now you have that same you maintained the same you know composure you could say or energy levels expression. yes the energy levels how is that possible just one word test because many people have and i don't know but yes i'm definitely blessed and i'm for ever great and almost all the companies sometimes when i go on tour or something or you know, sometimes i go to the call directly and come to the office in the afternoon the rest of the division will say sir don't do that sir please come to the office and go because when you come into the office and say good morning i mean the whole office is up so aap tour pe jaate ho whenever you are on tour or you don't come to the office in the morning the office mein you know, it loses its sheen i said okay i said look i mean i do that because of my job demand it's not that i want to but i don't know many people have said that and i said i want to be i mean i am extremely grateful and as i told you in the beginning i am blessed yes that's wonderful to be grateful and start appreciating the things in your life automatically that glow comes on your face and you feel that you're one of the best individuals on this earth now sir i'd like before we sum up i'd like you to focus on the busy bee what is this all about it would be really incomplete the session if i don't get any information on busy bee which you are the founder and you're taking it forward what is this all about well to be honest uh, i had plenty of stepping stones because i do not want to use very strong negative word like failure I started a company on security industry, <clears throat> and uh, I had it's an industry which is not very comfortable uh, in the sense people make uh, it's it's a very unscrupulous industry. What it is, I said I won't do that. I will not make. I will make what is a normal share of profit, but I will not double it and come. And over a year, he kept giving me excuses, but neither did anyone come, nor did I get the money. and then i started a company i was partner with a friend of mine for an automation company uh and it was a brilliant product bad timing so we so we had a product ready raring to go all of us full of energy an excellent product and we just crashed into poor for 6 months we had to pay the labor the staff and all that and we were not getting money from the market I said, "We have to." Then I went home. Then I realized that I'm doing, I'm making a lot of people rich. Whether it was you know, whichever company I work, I, I, I always did. I said, "It's time that I look into the mirror and make that bad guy, that guy also rich." And that's how busy we were. Now I found out a couple of opportunities in the market for networking and for training. I said, "I've had good experience. I'd like to share it." but who needs this experience and training i mean sundar pichai doesn't need any experience or knowledge sharing from bhutli shank and he's made he is making his share of money more than it so whom is who is it that actually requires it is a poor startup guy who is actually struggling in chennai in the hot scene making you know not able to make his ends meet not can't afford a five star uh, dinner or a lunch so those are the people who need to be helped and i said okay busy bee is is an extremely border certain to that 
So the whole idea is not to that I want to become an overnight millionaire or billionaire. The idea is to ensure that we're able to share. And if if I'm able to convert a couple of startups into unicorns, I, I would say that I've done my job. And I extended the same thing because that, that was when a friend, uh, Free Watson, gave me an opportunity with uh, and I said, look, I, I train entrepreneurs. I am not, a, my wife teaches, but I'm not a teacher. I've helped her occasionally, but I've not gone into teaching. He said, no, no, this is soft skill, and I think we should be able to do it. And I went in, and uh, I have a standard signature, which is that 4A, 4A waste card. You know, that's an entry for me. And the minute I did that trick, they were absolutely amazing. They said, sir, we want to learn. That's the end of the program. You have to pay attention. I'll tell you how, do I, uh, how I do it, but provided you pay attention to me in the class. So I had, I literally opened your mind, and once you enter their mind, you can get anything done. They have, they, there is no shortage of energy in kids. All you need to do is enter their mind. Once you occupy their mind space, you can get just about anything done. So when the signature was done, they had opened the doors, and I said, okay, let me. That is how, I thank Sri Watson for that. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, very much for sharing that. Thank you very much. And before we sum up the session, we always have a small segment called as the rapid fire round. We'll get okay. to know about your likes and dislikes. It will take another five minutes to 10 minutes. Sure. Thank you, sir. So friends, uh, we've been having a wonderful experience. So it has shared so many beautiful experiences, the personal front, the professional front with regard to Bruce, with regard to Mr. Hitler and all mm -hmm. of that. That's really very nice. And uh, a rich experience you've shared, you know, it's like an entire biography that you just you just open up that world to us. That's very nice. Friends, join us now to get to know about the likes and dislikes of our celebrity and guest. He is Murli Shankar. He's here with us, joining us all the way from Chennai. He spent most of his time in Mumbai, Matunga as a youngster, but later on again shifted back to Chennai, right, sir? Uh, yeah, Chennai was not direct. Uh, I came to Chennai via Dubai, via Berlin, via Qatar, via Bangalore, and, and finally Chennai. Yes, sir. Now, sir, uh, on this rapid fire round, the first question that I'd like to put forth is your favorite breakfast? Idli made by Vaidehi. He makes awesome, awesome meal. Are you a good cook? No way. Far away from the kitchen. You don't even know to prepare a cup of tea, maybe or cook rice. Nothing at all? No cooking skills? Uh, no, I've got an electric kettle and a tea bag. That's as far as I can. Yes, I get that. And among all the 12 months, which one is your favorite one? Jan. Any specific reason? Uh, one is generally cool. Second, it's my birthday. Third, it's Pongal. So, okay. activity period. Now, in Jan, when is your birthday? 15th. 15th Jan. I mean, very close. Pongal is 14th and then like, all yeah. those, it all comes in the... I was born on 14th night. Yes, yes. Wow. So, that is why my name was... Uh, my... Grandparents called me Murali Sangar. Sangar as in Sankranti. Sankranti. Okay. Now, when I went, joined Bosco, they said, what's your surname? I said, no, I don't have a surname. They said, even Red Indians have surname. Said, How can you not? So, they split Murali separate, Sankar separate. So, from that time, Sankar has become my family name. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, with regard to the seven days in a week, your favorite one? Is it Monday? Monday afternoon? Monday afternoon. Uh, I do not make calls on uh, Monday unless requested by the, uh, the person. Monday, I give people time to settle down. And even if I have to make telecalls or whatever, I do it only in the afternoon. And if um, somebody says, can you meet me on Monday morning? I reconfirm and then I say yes. I, I don't say no to them. But I avoid making appointments on Monday. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What about movies? Your favorite movie? I'm not a movie buff. Any one favorite movie? Just the name. Tamil, Hindi. You are from Mumbai, Bollywood. 
I, I think Chuck Day. I'll give it to Chuck. Your favorite color? Blue. Now, is it comfort or style? I'm sorry? Is it comfort or style when you consider dressing, grooming ah. yourself? What do you think? Like you are more focused on comfort or style or both? Blend both. Uh, both, but I'd, I'd lay emphasis on comfort. Yes. Now, with regard to money, do you have any regrets that you've spent money on certain items, you bought it, and then again you regret it? Why did I buy these? No regrets in that. Maybe lessons, but no regrets. What is that one thing you hated about your job? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, as a medical trip when we started, um, I hated to visiting the hospitals. I, I I hated the sight of blood and you know, sick people, which was there in the home as an MR. So that apart. What is that one I, thing you loved about your job? Yeah, meeting people. Meeting people. Meeting people. Like every new person is different. Your favorite snack, sir? Sandwich. Now, is it a veg sandwich or a non veg? Veg, veg. Remember, pure veg. Pure vegetarian. That's great, sir. Now, is it tea or coffee? Basically, tea. Coffee after wedding. Coffee after wedding. <laughs> I get the black coffee, filter coffee, brew coffee. Yeah, filter coffee because I mean she's, uh, I mean she's an Iyengar. They they love coffee. So I'm from Bombay. I mean she's also from Bombay, but then both, in fact, that way both of us love tea. Those of her uh, base in Bombay. But when we started visiting her uh, relatives, they would come with such a huge glass of coffee. Yes, sir. Had an image to keep, so mm -hmm. it's okay. And I'm, I, I guess you, uh, you shared this that you used, you both have used to meet in the coffee shop, like go to the yeah. market, buy vegetables, spend Correct. some time in the coffee yeah. shop, and then coffee shop. Tea. We used to have tea, but have tea. But have tea. <laughs> okay, I get that. Now, sir, with four decades of experience on the professional front, and with lots of life lessons that you've learned, now as of today, if I ask you, how would you want your day to be? In one word, what do you feel that a day has to be like this? Just put it in one word for us. Happy. All that matters is happiness. Absolutely. Because if you're happy, you can be happy. You can't be happy with a ton of money and uh, bad health. You can't be happy with the other way around either. Okay. So you need a mix of blood, of almost everything. That's why if you notice in, in our culture, if you look at Pong, uh, Pongal, uh, my mother used to make a festival called, called Kedala. So she would add a lot of things into that, which included uh, bitter God. So it's been called that, you know, you must have bitter, because sine wave, unless you're up, you can't be down. Unless you're down, you can't be up. The flat line is a dead man. Super. That's really nice. That's really nice. A great message. Now, sir, when you mention about sweets, your favorite one? Either from Mumbai, what was the famous sweet you loved in Mumbai and what you loved in Chennai? All across Mumbai, Chennai, only one, Bundi Ladu. Bundi Ladu. And my mother used to make uh, absolutely awesome. And she made it a point because uh, that was the sweet I kept asking when I was in the second standard. So by, whether she makes anything else or not, Diwali, Bundi Ladu was a must, mandatory. Yes. That's wonderful. Now, sir, uh, you are you connected to nature? And if yes, is it the beach, the forest, or the mountain mountainous area that attracts your attention and makes you feel more vibrant and energetic? I I prefer the mountain in the back, back and the beach in the front. I like the water, the ripple of water. You know, it, it, it's very soothing. Now, if I were to ask you, what comes first? Is it respect or love? Love. Is it from I'm experience? Not... Are you sharing this? Yeah, because say, I mean, if respect would be out of fear as well. I mean, 
So it, it, it could be camouflaged with another feeling and people tend, then you realize the respect was not for you, but it was for the chair. Wow. Okay. Oh, good but love, unconditional. Yeah, I, I really thank you for that explanation. I really appreciate the way you put that in the right way. Yes. Now, what about gifts? How many gifts you have received? I will not ask you, but what is the best gift that you've ever received till date? The most precious gift till date? Abhishek, my son. Wow. He must be he happy did. to hear this. He will be extremely happy to hear this. Oh, yes. Now, we be wonderful, lovely people. And thank you so much, Ms. Sanjay, for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. In fact, I have to be thankful to you because you've shared everything so transparently uh, and you've just opened up like a lovely book. Thank you very much. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Lots of love to everyone at home and to all your friends. Uh, and you have a special place uh, in this world and you are a blessing to the universe. Stay, stay safe and stay blessed, sir. Thanks to Sri Watson, sir, as well for being kind and generous towards us and uh, connecting us and bonding with us every time. Thank you, sir. Us. There is so much more to learn from our celebrity and guest, that is Mr. Murli Shankar, sir. He'll be here with us once more on special request. I will ask him to join us back. But for now, it's a big goodbye from us. Stay blessed and stay safe. If you like what we are doing on the International Fab Talks, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment. Share this video with the right kind of people. They may be, there may be someone out there who may benefit from it. There may be somebody who really wants to listen to all of this and to feel empowered. Because a person sharing 40 years of experience in one hour, one and a half hour, really, it speaks volumes of how they've been through the ups and downs and their resilience power is all that we really need to take from here and their wisdom. Stay safe, stay blessed. Keep smiling. Thank you, sir.